Hi, hello, welcome back to my channel Tutor Things. In this video, we are going to see uh, the rest of the Azure uh, uh, bits which you have, which we can expect in AZ900 exam of Azure Fundamentals. So previously we have done two videos, part one and part two related to these dumps. We have covered 40 bits in each of the video. So here comes the another 40 bits in this video. So don't skip any part of this video. Uh, listen to each and every bit and understand why we are getting these answers and what is the logic between the uh, concept which we are discussing in this video so that you will understand the basic things so that you can easily clear this exam AZ900. If you have any doubts related to a particular question, you can pause the video at that particular instant and you can read out the explanation which I have mentioned in this uh, video so that you will get knowledge on this particular concept why we are answering that particular thing to this answer like that you will get clarity each in, in each and every question we have explanation so let's get started before getting uh, started one thing i have to mention that is if you haven't subscribed to my channel please subscribe and click the bell icon below so that you will get notified each time when we upload a new video related to azure exams or any other dumps we are which we are be planning to give the dumps of this uh, Mm, Azure exams like Azure 104 and uh, 500 and we have 304 exam dumps so we are going to upload each and every video in the uh, upcoming videos so stay tuned to our channel click the bell icon to get notified each time when we upload a new video like this video and give a big thumbs up below so that will motivate us to give many more videos like this and uh, like this video share this video to your friends so that they will also clear this azure exams with a with a good marks right so they will get to, to know the what is the concept and what bits can you expect in this type of exams competitive exams so let's see 81 bit this is also a drag and drop type of question we have some answers in some area answer area boxes will be there where we have to drag and drop this particular answer this is like definition type of question they will give some statement so which statement is related to what type of service of azure like that you have to match so match the following like you can say so here is the question provides uh, which azure service provides a digital online assistance that provides speed support coming to speed support or digital online assistance we can go for ai artificial intelligence so azure having a service called as artificial intelligence bot that is azure ai bot you can match that thing and next one is uses past trainings to provide predictions that have a high probability so for having probabilities or predictions this type of things we can go for a machine learning right so uh, azure machine learning is a service which is providing these type of uh, services for us so like predictions with a high probability like that and which have product provide serverless computing functionalities coming to functionalities or functions serverless computing we have azure functions is a service which provides serverless computing functionalities so you can match that and we have this process data from million sensors sensors or any um, in internet of things we go for iot hub in the azure we have a iot hub service which provides uh, these type of things to work on with million types of servers like those so you can pause this video here we can read out that uh, what is one by azure board services and machine learning in depth they given some explanation here you can pause this video here you can read out those things so here comes the 82 bit which is also a like of a statement is a true or false like uh, not a true or false but a, it given a statement they give a solution we have a one plan and we have a solution is the solution meets the requirement or not we have to guess if that meet their goal uh, which they are asking for then you can say as yes or, or otherwise you can say as no so here the question we have a statement like an azure administration runs to powershell script that creates an azure resources you need to recommend which computer configuration to use to run the script here the solution they are giving like run the script from a computer that runs a windows 10 and has an azure powershell module installed they are they are giving the solution like this you can run the script from the computer that runs on windows 10 and you can have an azure powershell module installed they are asking to uh, plan a powershell script that creates azure resources so the requirement which we are looking for is satisfied with this solution they are given like powershell module is installed then no problem we can run the script to create azure resources so the explanation is correct the solution they have given is meeting the requirements which you are asking for so the statement is true you can give as an s as an answer so you can uh, have a powershell script file contains azure powershell commands and codes power script needs to be run in the powershell so powershell module is installed so no need of any other things so statement is true 
next we have another type of question that is a drag and drop type of question as we have seen in the first first bit similarly we have these th things which provides our operation system virtualization is nothing but virtual machines operating system creating virtually is nothing but a virtual machine so azure is providing services like as azure virtual machines next we have a provide portability environment for virtualized application which is providing virtualizing applications uh, environment creating a portable environment then you have these containers like uh, 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 kubernetes cluster creations we can create a uh, multiple virtual machines when you when there is a need of that so making that virtual applications is nothing but we have this azure container instances by that we can make this happen so next we have used to build deploy and scale web apps for web apps we have this azure web service app service where we can create web apps and deploy them and can deploy them and can scale them also so by using azure app service and next to provide a platform for serverless code coming to serverless functionalities or any other things uh, we have this azure functions so we can go with that service for creating this serverless code so here is the things which for which service which why we are using that the things what are the benefits of that so we can have this here in this explanation you can pause this video and you can read out those things if i read out and explain those things the video will become more lengthy and uh, you will got to lose some most of the time uh, in this video so that that will make affect your learning process so i'm just explaining you that the basic things if you want to go deeper in explanation to that particular bit you can pause this video and you can read out the explanation right so this service provides serverless computing azure as we seen previously like functions will provide a serverless code and functionality so you can say as so azure functions is the option correct option here and next we have this uh, question related to series of questions like uh, it will give a statement as we seen previously and it give a solution for that if the solution is meeting the requirement which they are asking for then you can say yes or otherwise no so here is a statement from azure documentation sorry here is the question if you have a azure subscription named as subscription one you can assign the azure assign it into azure portal and create an azure resource group named as rg1 you have created resource group rg1 with a subscription uh, one uh, what they are asking for from azure documentation you have the following commands that creates virtual machine named as v1 now you are going to create a virtual machine which is named as v1 from the uh, commands here is the commands like az vm create resource group rg1 and name v1 w, uh, v1 m vm1 and image ubuntu lts generate sh key without generate without generating sh key also we can generate resource groups and uh, sorry virtual machines and also Gen by generating SSH keys, also we can do. Or otherwise, we can specify the passwords and usernames for this in this place of uh, SSH keys. Okay, you need to create VM one in the subscription one by using the following command. They are giving a solution. This is the requirement. We are going to create a VM one a virtual machine using the subscription one by using this command. They have given this much data. Then again, what they are giving solution for that purpose? How can we um, generate? A, where we can give this command like that? Uh, they have to tell us. So solution they are giving is from this Azure portal launch Azure Cloud Shell and select Bash run the command in the Cloud Shell. So they are giving the command related to Bash so that you can uh, run that command particular command they have given in the Bash only. Uh, some statement looks sometimes something different when we are running, going to run in the PowerShell. So the statement they are related to given is related to Bash. So they are giving solution like you can launch the Cloud Shell and select the Bash and can run the command from the Cloud Shell. So the uh, so the give solution they are giving is meeting the requirement which you are asking for. So the statement is true. So that you can give an answer as yes. So next question: Your company having a several business units. Each business unit require twenty different actual Azure resources for daily operation. All the business units require the same type of Azure resources. You need to recommend a solution to automate the creation of Azure resources. Otherwise, uh, creating twenty virtual machines at a time, which is very risky task. You can automate the creation of Azure resources. So, what we can recommend for this purpose is you can have this Azure resource templates. By using the templates, you can just uh, duplicate the things which we are having like. ARM templates is used for creating automation, creation of Azure resources, deploying resources through the templates is known as infrastructure as a code. We can use this uh, templates as an infrastructure as a code so that you can automate the creation of uh, Azure resources. So this is the one of the advantage of uh, this ARM templates, right? 
template is in the JSON file which uh, defines the infrastructure and the configuration of your project so that by declaring syntax in this you can deploy and create these Azure resources within an easy way. So next bit uh, we have given drop and drop of questions same related to serverless code we have Azure functions. Big data analysis service for machine learning we have Databricks for that purpose. Big data is related to Databricks analysis of the service. Databricks we can use and detects and diagnosis anomalies uh, in web app. In web app, if there is any um, monitoring of web apps, we can use this application insights like how it is growing, how it, the traffic is growing, and how many times it is uh, calling that particular function like that. We can detect by using this Azure application insights. And next, we have host web app. For hosting web apps, what we can use, we have this Azure app service for hosting web apps. There's one of the service Azure is providing related to web apps. So these are the drag and drop of question which we have seen. For explanation, you can pause this video and read out these things box from box to box to box four. And next, uh, we have another more question related to the statement which they are asking. So what you can re recommend for that? We have this uh, answer area, right? So read out this question. We having a planning to deploy critical line of business application to Azure. The application will run on Azure Virtual Machines. So you need to recommend a deployment solution for this application. The solution must be provided. Guaranteed availability of 99.9%. .9%. What is the minimum number of virtual missions and the minimum number of availability zones you should recommend for the deployment to answer this appropriate in the question uh, appropriate option in the question area answer area. So they are asking for uh, virtual missions. Uh, application should run on virtual missions with the solution provides a guarantee of availability of 99.9%. .9%. If you are having any application, you should uh, run on that application in the infrastructure that is Azure virtual mission. So that should be availability of 99.9%. Then what will be the minimum number of virtual machines and minimum number of availability zones should you plan for this purpose, for your requirement? So they are giving some uh, options like uh, virtual machines are 1, 2, 3, which is the minimum. And availability zones are 1, 2, 3, which is the minimum. For minimum number of availability of virtual machines, you can go with the two. Two virtual machines are enough for getting 99.9%. And availability zones, you can have minimum two. If there is only one, you can't... Uh, uh, have this particular uh, availability zones or we can call it as uh, if there is one failure then there is no availability of other like so minimum number of you can have two for uh, virtual machines and availability zones then there will be a um, no failure uh, or any problem with that so next bit so related to um, which area service would you use to collect events from the multiple resources into a centralized repository to collect events, we have an event related service that is known as Event Hub. In Azure, have providing Azure Event Hub is one of service which is for a big data streaming platform and event investigation service. It can receive and post millions of events per second. So to process multiple events or resources from a centralized repository, we can have this Azure Event Hub. So that is a which is a data can be sent to an event hub can be transformed and stored by using real time analytics provider and for batching or storage and adapters. So we use this. And next bit related to uh, some statement and they are giving a solution. So the statement is we have an Azure environment. You need to create a new Azure virtual machine from a tablet that runs the uh, Android operating system. So they are giving an Azure virtual machine from a tablet that runs the Android uh, operating system. So what we are giving a solution is you can use PowerShell in the Azure Cloud Shell. You can use PowerShell in the Azure Cloud Shell. You, if you are having an operating system on Android also, you can open the Azure portal in your Android system. So that from Azure portal, you can have a Azure Cloud Shell. In that Azure Cloud Shell, you can use PowerShell for creating and re managing Azure resources. So there is no problem for this. Azure Cloud Shell is a browser based shell experience to minimize and develop Azure resources. So you can, uh, the statement is meeting the requirement, so you can go for S. And next we have the other bit related to that only, they are giving another solution that is, you can use the Power Apps Portal, you can use the Power Apps Portal they are telling. So you can, can't use the Power Apps Portal because Power Apps lets you to quickly build the business applications with a little or no code which is used to create Azure virtual machines, therefore the solution doesn't meet, meet the requirement goal which you are looking for. With Azure Apps Portal, we can't build uh, Azure Virtual Machines uh, through the Android system. So next, uh, we have the bit related to this. So they are telling that you can use the Azure Portal. Yes, of course, you can use the Azure Portal. From that, you can have this uh, Cloud Shell or you can directly, uh, from the Azure Portal, you can create uh, Azure resources. So the option is meeting our requirements. So the statement is yes. 
So next statement is uh, they are given uh, some statement with the underline. So this, if the statement with the underline uh, content is true, then you can say as no change is required. Otherwise, you can tell that uh, which should be uh, uh, wrong or uh, should be replaced with the incorrect, right? So they are telling the Azure Databricks is an Apache Spark based analytic services. Of course, Apache based analytic service is the Azure Databricks for big data man management things or any data analytics we do uh, by using Azure Databricks. So the statement is true, no change is required for this purpose. This is a Apache analytics platform where uh, platform comes of several computants including uh, MLib and MLib is a machine learning library consists of uh, common learning algorithms and utilities including classification, degradation and clustering, uh, collaborative filtering and demonstrating red uh, reduction as well as underlying uh, optimization primitives. So we can use this Azure uh, Databricks for this Apache based analytics service. So statement is true, no changes needed. And next this is yes or no type of questions. They will give some statements. If the statement is true, then you can give as yes. Otherwise, you can select as no. Azure Monitor, you can monitor the performance of on premises computers. Yes, of course, it will uh, monitor the performance of on premises computers. The statement is true. Next, Azure Monitor can send alerts to the Azure Active Directory security group. Yes, they will send the alert so that you will be get alert about uh, uh, the working of any or application or service, you can say. Azure Monitor can trigger alerts based upon the data in Azure Log Analytics work, work space. Yes, it will give alerts on the data uh, in Azure Log. It will give a Log Analytics workshop. So you can connect that also for the Azure uh, monitoring. So next we have the Azure service asking for which Azure service provides a set of version control tools to manage code. Coming to version control, we have this Azure repos which is a set of version control tools so that you can use manage your code. So incorrect answers are Azure DevOps, uh, no, we, can, uh, we can't we can use that uh, for uh, this purpose. And Azure Cosmos DB is a global distributed multi multimodal uh, database service. No, that is not used to manage version control. But we have this repos which is used for version control, Azure repos. And next, another question is related to the underlying content. They are telling that like Azure Site Recovery provides a fault tolerance for virtual machines. Is an Azure Site Recovery service providing Azure fault tolerance for virtual machines? As of course, they are providing a fault tolerance, so they are so there is no change in this statement. They are giving fault tolerance only not disaster recovery, not elastic, not availability. Fault tolerance is providing for virtual machines. Azure Site Recovery is true. No, no changes needed. Next, uh, they have given a statement underlying statement. An availability zone in Azure has physical separate uh, locations across two continents. Coming to two continents, um, no availability zone in Azure is physically separate locations across not on two continents but a single region in in single re Azure region we have two separate uh, uh, places for uh, database centers for virtual machines then that is said to be an availability zone not across two continents but within a single Azure region we have two different uh, database centers. Okay. So that statement is strong. Changes needed within a single Azure region only. We have uh, availability zone to protect our application from failures of data centers. Okay. Uh, here comes the uh, 98 bit. They are asking for the need to configure an Azure solution that meets the following requirements. They should have uh, secures website from attacks, generates uh, reports. Generate reports that contain uh, details of it. That contains details of attempted attacks. So attacks should be secured from attacks, and also if a log generates a report that contains the details of a attempted attacks, then you should have what type of service should be included in your application like that. So you should have this uh, uh, protection application that is DDoS. So this is nothing but uh, is a type of attack that tries to exhaust your application resources. So the goal is to affect the application's availability and its availability to handle legitimate uh, requests like that. So devoted attacks can be targeted at any endpoint that is publicly reachable through the internet. So this is uh, Azure uh, DDoS protection is offering services like protect or uh, protection from network attacks like that. So option is DDoS protection. And next we have a statement based thing. They are planning to implement several security ser services of an Azure environment. You need to identify which Azure service must be used to meet the following security requirements. So monitor threats by using sensors, enforce Azure multi-factor authentication based on a condition, 
which of the survey should be identified for each requirement to answer the selected appropriation in the answer area they have given answer area to monitor the threats from using different sensors which we are going to use related to sensors we have this protection called as an uh, azure advanced threat protection atp from this we can um, monitor the threats caused by the sensors okay so next we have this enforce azure uh, multi factor authentication based on a condition means we can have this active directory concept that is azure active directory identification protection so eid eip so we can call it as azure active directory identified protection we can uh, have this condition based related to multi factor authentication so if you want to know each and every concept you can pause this video and you can uh, read out this explanation so another one is a yes or no statement related thing here given a statement if the statement is true you can give an answer as yes or otherwise no for major service health administration administration can view the health of all services deployed to the nature limited and all the other services available in nature yes you can uh, see the health health of the like services which are uh, having any uh, drawbacks or failures we can view its health in the azure service health the statement is true from the azure health service So administration can create a rule to be alerted uh, if an Azure failures. Yes, we can create a rules uh, like this much uh, MB is crossed or this much data they are using. You can create an alerts based upon your own condition. So that uh, so that this Azure service help provide you alerts if the, your condition is uh, met or uh, any failure occurs based upon that condition. So like that, it will give alerts. The statement is true. So Azure service health and administration can prevent a service failure from affecting a specific virtual machine no you can't uh, prevent a service failure from affecting any virtual machine from the uh, azure service health it just uh, give you alerts and it will uh, display you the uh, health of your services but you can't uh, prevent that uh, uh, affecting of your virtual machine from this azure he service health so statement is uh, wrong you can't uh, prevent that so next uh, So next statement is related to a uh, planning things. You can planning to migrating all on premises data to Azure. You need to identify which Azure compiles with the company's regional requirements which you use. For regional requirements, we can uh, have this Azure uh, data centers. For Azure having a more than thirty compliance certifications include fifty specific to a global regions and countries such as US and uh, European U Union and Germany, France and Japan. so united kingdom india and china so you can view a list of comparison certificates in the trust center to determine whether the azure meet your regional requirements or not you can use this trust uh, trust center thing in azure so that you uh, check your regional requirements in that place so next um, we are giving a statement like uh, the azure key vault is used to store secrets for uh, azure directory user accounts yes of course you can um, view uh, keys you can store your keys and secrets in the azure key vault uh, so secrets for not azure uh, uh, directory user accounts but you can keep secrets related to server applications like that this is a centralizing storage of application secrets in azure key vault allows you to control their distribution key vault create uh, create greatly reduces the chances that secrets may be accidentally leaked when you are using key vault application developers no longer need to store security information in their application so they can use this thing instead of that not having to store security information application eliminates the need to make the information part of the code right for example an application may need to uh, connect to database like that instead of storing the connection string in the app codes you can store it in the security key vault right so it is not for storing the uh, active directory user accounts but they are used to store the uh, server related applications like the keys and those things sensitive information you can create in uh, store in the key vault like now this is statement is or no type of questions so authorization to use uh, azure resources can be provided only to azure uh, active directory users no they are not uh, only for uh, azure active resources you can have this authorization for other purpose also statement is wrong identity stored in azure active directory third party cloud services on premises active directory can be used to access azure resources says yes, of course you can use those resources as yes, uh, the azure has a built in authentication and authorization services that provide secure access to the azure resources yes, that provide secure access to the azure resources authentication and authorization can be uh, provide uh, this uh, type of uh, affecting things security reasons 
we can have that yes um now comes the one on four bit here is the statement relating your manager uh, your company's plan to automate the deployment of services to azure your manager is concerned that you may expose administration credentials during the deployment you need to recommend a solution that encrypts the administrative credentials used in the deployment when you are in the deployment uh, these credentials having any problem like exposing the administration credentials will be problem then you have this azure up key vault where you can store various types of sensitive information uh, like uh, related to uh, service application things or any other administration uh, credentials you can store it in the key vault so that within a solution there is no need to store the administration credentials as a plain text in the deployment script so again you can uh, you can maybe encrypt also for that uh, you can use this key vault the information is stored in an encrypted form that will create a high uh, security for your data sensitive data so next bit you can plan to deploy several azure virtual machine you need to control the ports so that the device on the internet can use across the virtual machines so yes a network security groups which is having a nsg called as nsg network security groups creates that the control of the ports that the device on the internet can be accessed through the virtual machines so this is the one of the firewall like it works as a firewall that can uh, can attack a network security groups to a virtual network or individual subnets within a sub virtual network so it will create you um, a security purpose so next to complete the sentence the following the appropriate option in the answer is to complete the sentence we have to use which which suits the better for the statement so if is resource group named as rg1 has a delete lock then what is the delete lock the delete lock must be removed before the administrator administrator uh, yeah before you are going to uh, use that particular thing you should remove the delete lock yeah next you can configure a, uh, you can configure a lock on azure resource group to prevent the accidental deletion of a resource group the lock apply, applies to everyone including global administrator uh, if you want to delete the resource group the lock must be removed first right so like that so it will be applicable for everyone so next the statement is related to statement uh, azure germany can be used by legal resident of germany only so they are telling that only that users can use like that uh, um, no any user or enterprise that can requires its data to reside in germany they can use that azure germany is available to el eligible customers and uh, partners globally who intend to do business in the efta or uh, eu or uh, including any united kingdom like that is just offer a separate instance of microsoft azure resources within the germany data centers like that only so any user or enterprise that can require its data to reside in germany can use that so next statement is um, after you create a virtual machine you need to modify the network security groups to allow the connection to tcp port 8080 on virtual machine yes after creating a virtual machine you should modify the network security groups to allow any tcp port like 8080 we have uh, we have to use that in the virtual machine so you should change the network security groups yes the statement is true no change is required for this purpose so next term um, we have a question related to uh, series like question is a part of series present in the same scenario so you should uh, uh, the statement they have given a statement once problem is there and you have a, give us you have to give a solution and uh, they ha they will give the solution you just supports to give that solution is meeting the requirement or not like that yes or no so azure and only contain multiple azure virtual machines you need to ensure that a virtual machine named w1 so virtual machine 1 is accessible from the internet over http so for accessing over internet http you should modify the nsg network security groups for this purpose you should set up the port which you are going to access or throw so they are giving a solution like you should modify a network security group nsgs the statement is true if you modify you can access over the internet but through the http call so the statement is true next they are giving yes or no statements you can read out the statement you can say yes or no this is one of the repeated bit which you have seen previously the all the statements is correct you can pause this video you can read out this is a repetition bit so i am not reading it out again here comes the related to active directory which requires implementation of domain controllers on actual machines so no no need of uh, any domain controllers on a virtual machine requires 
So Azure Directory, uh, Active Directory provides authentication services for the resources hosted in Azure and Microsoft 365. Yes, so Azure Active Directory provides authentication for the services. That statement is true. Each user has an account in Azure Active Directory can be assigned only one license. No, no more than one license we can. If the license is completed, then uh, you can use other license for the uh, previously contained Azure Active Directory. So the statement is not true. So you can give as no. Next, we have another statement which is called as um, one statement uh, they have given. The same which we have seen previously, we have in creating a virtual virtual machines with the name V1M and it is accessible over the internet. So that uh, how you can do, they can give a solution, you can modify DTOS protection plan. No need of protection here if you want to, uh, no need of protection concept they are discussing about. They are discussing about how can you access through the internet over HTTP, then you have to modify that. Uh, Network security groups, the NSG, but not the DTOS protection plan. So the statement is not true. That is false. So you can give answer as no. And then the another related question is they are giving the same question that giving solution like you can modify an Azure firewall. Yes, of course not NSG. You can also NSG is type of a firewall which we are preventing this traffic to that virtual machine. So you can also modify the Azure firewall based upon the condition which you are going to pass through a HTTP request or any port. You can uh, modify the Azure firewall. Also, you can create an uh, uh, call through this uh, HTTP port to the virtual machine that is also meeting the requirement you can say as yes a option a is correct yes next we have this um, related to azure network virtual machine you need to ensure uh, the traffic again the same question they are giving a solution like can modify an azure traffic manager profile traffic manager profile is no no concept or related to uh, um, ports like uh, like tr managing traffic is not uh, related to this thing so you, that is not a meeting our requirements so statement is false this is generally a dns based load balancing solution which is not uh, used to ensure that virtual machine is accessible to our internet or not that is the other concept which is used for load balancing thing not for the allowing traffic those things allowing traffic but based upon traffic they are load balancing not related to what traffic should be allowed like that and next we have another bit related to two types of customer are eligible to use virtual uh, Azure government uh, to deploy a cloud solution. So you have to select the correct option which is used for which government is used for deployed cloud solution. So United States government entity is used for that purpose and uh, United States government contractor these two things like Azure government is a cloud and government specifically built to meet uh, compilations and security requirements for US government. So for the US government they have given these two options entity and contractor to we can select those two options as the correct options. And next we have this statement as of two type of questions related to multi-factor authentication. You can read out this question and the statement is true then given as or else no. To implement an Azure multi-factor authentication solution you must deploy a federation solution or sync on premises identities to the cloud no need of all these things you should have a phone number to implement that multi-factor authentication next two valid methods for azure multi-factor authentication are picture identification and password number no no need of picture identification or password number you can have a phone number for this purpose azure uh, multi-factor authentication can be uh, required for administrative and non-administrative user accounts yes can be required for uh, both the accounts statement is true you can give us yes next question you need to ensure that Azure Active Directory users uh, connect to Azure AD from the internet you, by using anonymous AP. The users are promoted automatically to change their password. So yeah, they are used to change the password uh, by which service means identification protection. Azure Active Directory identification protection uses for this purpose to include two risk policies like uh, sign in risk policy and user risk policy. There are two types of policies you can include for this protection. So Azure identification protection is used for this purpose. This and another question is related to drag and drop of question. They have given uh, four bits. Azure government and uh, GDPR and ISO and NIST. So based upon that statement which they are discussing about, you should uh, give and drag and drop the particular uh, related type of answer for that. An organization that defines the international standard across all the industries is uh, ISO. That, that organization only decides the standards for uh, all the industries. And next, an organization that defines standards used by United States government. Related to United States government, not an international that is related to NIST. NIST gives the cloud uh, computing definitions like they define the standards of any particular thing related to 
uh, any organization like that that is created by NIST. And next, a European policy that regulates data privacy and data protection is uh, GDPR, which related to data protection and data privacy that related to concept is created by this organization. And a dedicated public cloud for federal and uh, state agencies in the United States Azure government related to public cloud uh, for federation and uh, state agencies in the United States is regulated by the organization called as Azure government. So these things, uh, you, you can read out the another facts by this person in the video. You can read out this explanation related to ISO, NIST, GDPR and uh, Azure government. You can post this video here and you can read out these things here related to those things. And next, um, we are giving a statement which uh, uh, you can recommend for this like that. Your company plans to deploy several web servers and several database servers to Azure. You need to recommend an Azure solution to limit the types of connections from the web servers to the web database servers. They are giving uh, uh, related to database servers and database related things. So for this purpose, you can have this uh, network security groups, NSGs. So this is like act as a firewall that can attack, uh, that can uh, create your uh, application or database secure. For database also you can have these NSGs uh, for different servers like that. So next a bit is uh, to what should an application connect to retrieve security tokens. To retrieve security tokens we can use this Azure Active Directory concept. This is an this is a service which is used to uh, connect an application to retrieve any security con con tokens like that. You can pause this video and re read out these things. This is a user authentications users and provides access tokens. An access token is a security token that is issued by an authorized server. It contains information about the user and the app for which the token is intended, intended to. They can be used to access web APIs and other protected uh, resources also. So Azure Active Directory uh, used for this purpose. So that's all for today. We have completed 40 bits related to this. In the pre previous part 1, part 2 and part 3, we have completed uh, 40, 40 bits each. So till now we have completed 120 bits. You will expect another more video for uh, rest of the bits. So we are going to complete the rest of the bits in other videos. So stay tuned to us and uh, follow us and subscribe to our channel and click the bell icon to get notified each time when we upload a new video.